Hey guys, welcome to another uh, Jay Adams on One Film, and today we're going over probably one of the biggest topics uh, I've thought I've needed to do for a long time, the uh, top 25 most uh, hateful cars in Gran Turismo 6. Now, uh, basically, these are all my opinion. Um, these have nothing to do with actual statistics or anything, unless you're into that kind of stuff, and I will give some statistics on each car that I list. So starting off number 25, we have the Daihatsu Midget. Now this car has had some, pro some has been a problem child uh, for people who like speed or need something affordable. Now if you're just starting out in Gran Turismo, it's not a bad place to start because the car is very light and agile. Of course, it is a little underpowered, so basically it's only good for the smaller tracks. But um, in Gran Turismo 6, of course, your only option is a Honda Fit. So there's that. Uh, but I've heard they do make some gnarly drift cars uh, if you can tune it up right. So uh, there's there's a pro for that. Um, up number 24, the uh, Volkswagen Golf 4 GTI. Now this car, I mainly have a problem with it due to its lack of being able to be tuned properly. This car really uh, pushes my buttons because I have fully modified a Golf GTI before. Uh, you can go to the Ultimate Grand Trust Tunes channel and check that out. But uh, that's really one of my big problems is this lack of the ability to be tuned. I don't even think you can get a turbo hitched on it. Uh, I think the maximum amount of horsepower it can get is 430, which is ridiculously bad. At number 23, the uh, probably the Fiat 500 of Barth. Uh, my problem with it is it's slow, dim-witted. I mean, it's got some muscle to it, but for the price they they ask for it in the game, it's ridiculous because you can buy a low model uh, Mitsubishi Evo for that price, um, probably. And it's it's heavily overpriced. It, it bothers me. Um, Understeer is like a pig. Uh, there's a lot of torque steer issues in the car as well. If you're playing in the steering wheel, I've noticed. Um, if you don't have your hands on the steering wheel, at least. Uh, at number 22, probably uh, probably going to get some major feedback for it, but the uh, Volkswagen 1200 from 1966. Um, now this, one of my biggest problems is, again, the lack of tunability, but it doesn't make any sense to me because cars with less than 180 horsepower, I never thought would make it into a game like this because... Uh, I can see the advantage for having the old Beatles in the game for people who really wanted it and were collectors and stuff. But I mean, like, why why waste your time on it? I mean, I own a 1200. It's fully modified and everything. It's a I call it the RSR after the 911 race cars. But like, the maximum horsepower you can get out of this thing is modified is only 250 or something. I mean, it weighs about as much as my foot, but it's still isn't really fast. It's the fastest I've been able to go with my 1200 without getting transmission bog. It's 166. Next up again is another Beetle, the 1200 standard from 1945. Now this is another car that suffers from a lack of tunability. Um, it's much it's the same deal as the 1200, just a little bit slower and a little bit less power. You know, again, uh, a lack of tunability, but since it's a standard car, you can't make it look as good as a 1200 that's modified. Like, my 1200, I think, looks spectacular. It's yellow uh, with the black with a big uh, spoiler in the back end with the uh, bumpers deleted with some Motegi race wheels. I mean, I like it. It, it looks ravishing to me. At number 20, I believe, this is number 20, I believe the Ferrari 250 GTO. I mean, it's it's really overpriced. And then the car itself, it looks ravishing. I love the look of the 250 GTO. But for as low power as it is compared to a, a, two, a 283 Grand 458, it's really a waste of money unless you're a collector. Number 19, uh, this is a tough one for me getting up this high, but the rough BTR. The entry level rough or a BTR or Porsche 911 if you're politically correct like I am. Um, it's really not as good as a CTR or a CTR2, especially uh, even if you're, especially on the drag circuits, because I've seen a few BTRs for people who don't. Who, it's basically a cheap man CTR2 to them. Uh, they're not really that quick. They're not really uh, great in a straight line because all they do is since they're all the weights on the back, it's just spinning its wheels. So that, those are my problems with it. Number 18, the Honda HSV-010. Now my problem with this car is mainly with the sound it makes because I have sensitive ears because I've gone undergone uh, several ear surgeries and I have Asperger's syndrome which causes my hearing to be very sensitive. But the car itself is ridiculous. I mean I, I despise the sound it makes. 
it, it pierces my eardrums out bad. And so I actually wear headphones now when I'm playing games. I'm listening to music while I drive one of these. I don't own one anymore like I did on 5. I had a, I had the wider on 5, and I hated the sound it makes after they did an update for it and made the sound what it is now. At what I believe is number uh, 17 is um, probably the another Abarth, the uh, Auto Bianchi A1112. That car really just uh, wow. 30 grand, I think it's around 30 grand is the asking price for that car in the game. And it doesn't even, I don't even think it has 100 horsepower. And it's small, slow. Ugly. I mean, it's a it's a waste of money in my opinion. At number sixteen, uh, this is a really good one here. The Audi A2, I believe is what it is. The one point six. Uh, now that car not only looks ugly, it's slow, just like uh, the uh, Auto Bianchi, and it just doesn't really put on as well as much of a good show as the uh, Honda Fit does, which is next at number fifteen. The Fit, in my opinion, I hate that they force you to start out one because I've had better starting cars. I've had a Civic SIR uh, EG as my starting car on four, and a, uh, a Toyota Corolla A86 on a uh, on three, and those were amazing cars. I did really well in those. I still have my Civic SIR on a Range Rover four, but the Fit suffers from oh, it's it's a lot lighter, but it's so underpowered even at full modification. Uh, the, but what's amazing though is when you get one fully modified like I've done before with a fit and you do a drag test on it and it clocks in at a well mine wasn't completely modified yet so it finished in at a 14.9 on the uh, quarter mile which beats out some modern day Ferraris if you look into it really well which is a big shocker for me I think if you're going to look into buying a car like that um, at number 14 uh, the Lamborghini Miro M400 Bertone now that it's probably gonna get me some have some really negative feedback on that because the, the my problem with the Mira is is that um, especially having played Midnight Club Three, which I know uh, Midnight Club Los Angeles, which is I know is not as realistic. The car is really wide and the visibility is really bad because I've driven a Mira on Grand Turismo Five, the M400 Bertone, and I can't stand how weird the visibility is. Um, the car is so bad at oversteering and uh, a lot of the a lot of the power is. It's super light though, so if you're looking for a lightweight racer, the Mira will be your option. Of course, it is very heavily overpriced at I believe around 10 million credits, but uh, it's still a good car if you're into that kind of stuff. Number 13, uh, another car coming from Volkswagen HE, the uh, W12 Nardo. Now this is a car I actually like. Uh, I have yet to own one, but I have seen them before. They're uh, really expensive at 1 million credits. I mean. And knowing they have like a, a little over 500 horsepower just shocks me a little bit because you can buy a Viper for 128 grand, which has more horsepower and looks better than a W12 Nardo. Now, if you're like perf like only wanting a Volkswagen and you want a supercar, then yeah, buy the W12. I mean, it's a good car overall, four-wheel drive, but I think it's overpriced. At number 12, I believe. Um, I would honestly say the uh, Chevrolet Corvette C5s because those cars um, they're oversteery um, they just don't look as good as the new ones the C6s and the C7 especially which I is actually probably my number one most loved car in the game you know they're, it's a good car overall but like the C5 is just not my favorite uh, I number 11 uh, Honestly, this is a tough one for me because, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of the car. The Volkswagen New Beetle 2.0. Um, having owned one and built one that is exceptional in every way, my problem is it understeers quite a lot. So you have to really get in there, the tuning and a lot of hard work to get it built right because of its really high center of gravity. Because if you've looked at one, their roof line is magnificently large. And... It makes it really difficult to go into a corner really quick because it just wants to flip around and stuff. But but having built a Beetle up and having made a proper race car out of it, I, I would honestly say to buy one if you're a, uh, an expert tuner. Like if you're good at making track tuners, like the Maya Beetle I call it the Evolution because it is much better. It's, um, it's a dark blue 
with BBS racing wheels and a very small wing on the back on the uh, rear hatch door. It's amazingly quick. It's um, beating a Ferrari, a stock Ferrari 458 around a midfield raceway when I, on, uh, when I was using the steering wheel and a manual transmission on a Ferrari. Um, number 10, a Mercedes SL65 AMG, the R230 version. Now, I bought this car uh, just a couple days ago because I wanted a V12 Mercedes. And because the only Mercedes I have in the game are the two VGT cars, the um, VGT AMG Coupe and the VGT A uh, AMG Racing Series. Now, I love the AMG brand to death because they've made such great cars like the SLS and the AMG GT, which I know is not in Gran Turismo. But the SL65, I have a problem with with multiple reasons. 200 grand price, um, two-ton curb weight, and the fact that this transmission takes forever to downshift and upshift. Because, like, for example, earlier today, I was on Fuji Speedway, uh, the GT track, the GT formation, with my... Uh, with my SL65, which I've modified a little bit without white modifications, but I've given a lot of bit of engine tuning. So it's producing 698 horsepower. But when you're up shifting, shifting times do take a little bit. I mean, it, I mean, of course it's an older car, but for a Mercedes, you'd expect it to be seamless, especially in AMG. But the worst part is when you're going into a corner and you're trying to downshift and you get a little recommended gear thing flashing at you and you slow down ridiculously slow and it won't shift out of gear in automatic mode. Like, for example, the first corner of Fuji, I'm going in at maybe 120, 130 uh, with, in third gear. Stumble on the brakes, and it's a stock transmission, of course. And I'll reach maybe 3,000 and 2,000 RPMs in third gear before it eventually shifts up in second. And that annoys the crap out of me because you'll, you'll be thinking, I'm going slow enough to get into this corner, but it never slows down. It never shifts gears. And then with a two-ton curb weight, especially if you're in traction control and ASM off, you were going to be going into a tree every time you touch the gas when you're going into a corner and you're in first gear or low RPMs because the turbos will kick in and just fling you around. Um, I think a number nine, this is going to be a big one because the um, the uh, the the, Viper, the SRT Viper GTS, um, again, it's it's really heavy. Um, it's, it's, it has a lack of power. If you fully modify one, I don't even think it touches a thousand horsepower. Uh, even with the supercharger upgrade, um, it's it's big. It's, it's got way too much torque. You go into a corner with traction control off, you're flinging yourself into a ditch, and it's bad. I mean, it's lightweight for what it is. If you get all the weight modifications done on it, and it's a great car then. But if you're gonna throw something together um, on a cheap budget, but you want something quick, don't go for the Viper because it's honestly just a waste of time. Um, a number eight, the uh, Mercedes SL 500, the old one, the R129. Now, I love this car in real life. Uh, I wish to own one, I, but it's a very rare car you see around here in uh, Georgia, so it's not really the biggest thing you'll see. Um, the uh, SL 500 suffers from, again, the same transmission problem that the SL 65 has. It was at number 10 or 11, I think number 10. But, um, you know, it's... It's a great car overall if you want a V8 powered car. It's the same story with number seven, which is the SL600, the SL600 of that same thing because the same uh, body style because it is a little bit funky on the edges with the um, with the transmission and uh, it's much lighter than the new SL65, but it's just not as quick. The SL600 only has uh, 370 horsepower, which is kind of upsetting. Now at number six, now this is a big one because this is. Probably, uh, probably uh, going to get me some very bad negative feedback. But the Ford Mustang, the Shelby GT500. Now, if you're all, if you're going into a drag room, by all means get one because they are really quick. Because uh, if you get all the weight modifications done and you get the engine modded up right and you get the transmission set up and the nitrous upgrade set up perfect, you'll be rocketing down the straightaway without a problem. But if you're going into a racetrack and I've done a racing modification setup, like or I've given a big wing and downforce kits and stuff, don't do it. It understeers really bad, and then if you take the wing off, it'll be sliding around every corner when you're not even trying to give it full gas because the supercharger is just throwing you off. I mean, it's not really one of the greatest cars to race in. At number five, um, yet again, coming from the Mustang family, the SVT Cobra R. This car suffers from a lack of uh, creativity in it because really all it is is you. the only thing you can do to modify it is change the wheels and take the wing off and then do some modifications in there. But even then, the engine modifications are very slim. Uh, I own an SVTR, that's, that's how I know, really.
Uh, I believe we're going to number three now. This one's uh, the Mini Cooper 1.3i. Now this car is not really my favorite because it is sluggish, it's small, it's uh, not really good at anything. I'm just going to be honest. I own one, of course. That's where I'm getting most of these opinions from, the cars I own. Um, number two, the Red Bull X2014, or basically any X series. My problem with those cars is that they're annoying to listen to, and when you're racing online and you have a specific set where you want to do drag racing or road cars, some jerk always brings one in and kills not only your ears but your mentality and your and your uh, patience because you just get really mad, and then they start playing around and ramming you and stuff. I've had this happen so many times. Um, that had to happen recently when I was hosting a race for LMP cars, and some idiot brought in a Red Bull, and I told him no Red Bull, and he just left. I hate trolls who do that. Um... I like now pros are they're really fast uh, to a point where they don't have a really high top speed compared to cars like the TZ3 Strali and the 177 and so on, but they are good cars nevertheless. Now the handling, if you're not if you're new to Gran Turismo, don't try to go for the X the X series steering really quick or really hard because it fights. Like if you turn the wheel too hard, if you're going really slow, it just throws you into a wall because you're, the, the steering is trying to calibrate itself, you know. But if you're going at a high speed, it's not it's not that hard to steer. I mean, I still have trouble tr trouble now and again from uh, putting too much input in on the steering, and it throws me into a ditch. But I mean, usually I just restart the race anyway. Now number one, honestly, this is gonna be a hard decision for me to make. I'm gonna have to really think it out real quick because uh, I'm doing this all based on the top of my head. Um. You know, really, my, my number one and most hated car in the game is the Bugatti Veyron. Um, handling, horrible. Power, horrible. Uh, I mean, power is immense on that car. I mean, it is the world's fastest car for a reason, of course, now it's the Hennessy Venom GT. But the, the Veyron, if you're wanting to do a race with one, by all means, the only track you can really do it on is Special Stage Route X. Because that is the one track where you can go flat out and take advantage of it. Because if you're like, for example, the the final S license test on a Scari is horrid, because you, it's like it understeers because it weighs like three tons, and it annoys me to death. I mean, and then at the same time, you can't really control the car because it always it's not only is it heavy, but it's not really the most aerodynamic car in the world. I mean, it's it looks like a ball when you're looking at it sideways, in my opinion. To me, it looks more like a Beetle than it does its own kind of model. I mean, that's one thing I've always said about the Veyron. But I mean, like, of course, if you're looking to buy a flat-out high-speed car, by all means, buy one if you like. But of course, I'll always stick with my trusty Alfa Romeo TZ3 Stradale because I find that the most greatest of the speed cars because I've gotten in top mine at 240-something. I've had a McLaren F1 do the same about speed. So if you want to buy a supercar of some sort to get to a really high speed, the very one will probably be your third choice because honestly, the 177, the McLaren F1, and the Alfa Romeo TZ3, and even the Corvette for that matter, the Stingray C7, higher on that list than the Veyron when it comes to speed. So um, that'll about do it for this um, big rant on the top 25 most hated cars in Gran Turismo. So uh, if you want to see more action with me, either playing Pokemon or um, I might even start some Gran Turismo videos soon, uh, like and subscribe. I mean, that really helps out. It uh, gives me a little bit of support to work on. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you guys again soon.